Before you can begin building your Follow Me robot, you'll want to figure out what kind of motors and batteries you'll need. The motors you select will have to have enough torque in order to move your robot, and the batteries you select will have to have enough current capacity for the runtime needed. When selecting motors for your robot, two things you'll also want to keep in mind are the final output RPM of the gear motor and the diameter of the wheels you're using. Typical walking speed of a person is about 4.6 feet per second. This is equal to approximately 55 inches per second. A 6 inch diameter wheel has a circumference of about 18.85 inches. It would need to rotate approximately 3 times per second to travel a bit more than 55 inches meaning that the final output of the gear motor needs to be around 180 RPM to approximate a person's walking speed. Therefore, for most Follow Me robots, when using 6 to 7 inch diameter wheels, a final output shaft speed of 150 to 250 RPM should be sufficient. If you are using larger or smaller wheels, you would need to adjust the speed accordingly. This can be done either with gearing or using a speed controller, or a combination of both. A small robot won't need much more than some gear motors like these, but a larger robot might need something more powerful. For instance, many battery powered drills or screwdrivers can be turned into useful gear motors for your robot. Electric motors used in automobiles, such as these window actuator motors, can also be useful. All of these motors can be found as junk, from surplus vendors or brand new, depending on the specifications you need and the resources you have available. For my robot, I'll be using these seed actuator motors. They are currently available on the surplus market and were originally manufactured by General Motors, an American automobile company. They run on 12 volts, have a fairly low running amperage, rotate at the right speed, and have excellent torque and power for their size, while not being very expensive. Before you can select the batteries for your robot, you'll need to estimate how much current the motors draw under a load. Once you have an idea of this, you can then select the right batteries to deliver that current for the runtime needed. So how can you figure out how much current your motors will use when under a load? Well, the easiest method is to consult the datasheet for your motor. But what if you can't find a datasheet for your motor? The answer, of course, is to take some measurements and calculate the stall current. This will give you a good estimate that will be close enough for you to be able to select the right battery for your robot. We are mainly concerned about the stall current of the motor, which is the amount of current the motor will draw when the shaft is not moving. This condition occurs during the startup of the motor, when voltage is first applied, as well as when the motor is under maximum load, so that it can no longer turn. You can find the stall current fairly easily by applying Ohm's law. First, set your meter to the lowest resistance range setting available. On a low cost 3.5 digit meter, it will probably be marked 200 ohms. If you have an auto ranging meter though, just set it to measure resistance. Once set, short the test leads together and note the resistance reading, if any. This amount will need to be subtracted later. Measure the terminal resistance of the motor by putting the test leads across the motor's terminals. Subtract the lead resistance if any was found. Rotate the motor shaft slightly or apply a voltage to rotate the motor briefly if you can't directly access the motor's shaft and take another reading. Do this a few times, then calculate the average resistance measured. It will likely be only a few ohms. Then all you have to do is plug the numbers into the formula. In the case of a stalled motor, the back EMF voltage is effectively zero, and so that can be factored out, leaving us with... For instance, if our motor is to be powered by 12 volts, 
and the terminal resistance of it was measured as 0.7 ohms, then the amperage at stall would be calculated as As an example, here is one of the motors I'm going to be using for my robot. I set my meter to measure resistance and check the resistance of the leads. I then put the leads across the motor terminals and measure the motor's resistance. I apply some power to the motor to rotate it a bit and take another reading. I do this a third time and then take the average of the readings. Dividing 12 volts by this average resistance value, I get my amperage, my stall current for this motor. Smaller robots can usually be powered using batteries like these. These batteries are generally available in a variety of sizes, but usually don't exceed 12 volts or 10 amp hours, with a few exceptions. But larger robots will usually need larger capacity batteries to be able to supply more current for longer periods of time. Batteries like these can be quite heavy since they use lead acid based chemistry, but they can deliver a lot of amps for quite a while, are very sturdy, and are fairly inexpensive. However, if you need something lighter and have the budget, lithium chemistry batteries are available in a variety of sizes and shapes. They weigh much less, but tend to be more expensive than other battery types. Be sure to check out the Junkbotics GitHub repository for more information on this tutorial and other projects. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to receive future updates, and while you're down there, hit that like button. Thank you again for watching, and remember, keep calm and keep junkin'. Thank you.